So I want to leave this electric field formula on the board as something that we'll refer back to as we drive, uh, as we apply Gauss's law uh, um, towards the end of the class today. But um, in the first remaining first half of the class, what I want to do is I want to give you some intuition for electric fields. So you know, you guys come in with a varying level of intuitive field for electric field. Some of you have finally understood the importance of this relationship. Uh, you know, I have, I'll just tell you that the difficulty you guys are facing, it's common. Each semester, I tell people that this is how electric field is defined. And then when I ask people about electric field, I get blank stares every single semester. And I think, uh, maybe I'm wrong about this, but my guess is that because this is a, such a simple looking expression, that people underestimate how important it is. That you see it and you just forget about it. Oh, that looks so simple. I'm going to remember it. And you don't. <laughs> um, so I just want to emphasize that this is your connection between what you know, forces, and what you don't know, electric field. So whenever you feel confused about electric field, this is where you come back to. Not the set of rules that you will hear now. I mean, you know, it's good to know the rules, but that's not the main, uh, in, main um, emphasis. So let me go to uh, fat.colorado.edu. Um, you guys have seen me use this several times. Well, have you seen me use this? Well, this is one of my favorite websites for simulations. It's all free. I think they had a grant or something to um, develop all this. And one of the simulations that's useful for illustrating um, electric field is the, um, they have the um, simulation called uh, charges and field. So let me use this to try to illustrate what um, illustrate and start to develop some intuition for electric field. So I'm just going to run it. I think it has a, a project um, presentation mode where I can use a, a higher contrast colors. So let me try to do that. Options, yeah, projector mode. All right, that's higher contrast. OK, um, so this is a simulation that uh, where if I place a charge somewhere in the space, it will illustrate electric fields um, that are being produced by this charge. That, so I keep saying electric field is a property of space. That's what the simulation is illustrating. As in, if I take this point in space here, you know, this point here, I can always talk about, I can always ask, what is the electric field? So for example, let me remove this charge. What is the electric field at this point? OK, let's ask this question. So when you are trying to figure out what the electric field is, the proper question to ask, as I think Kevin was trying to do, what would the force on the charge be if I place the charge here? Right? What would the force on the charge be? It's a simple answer. Right? Zero, right? If I, do you guys believe that if I place a charge here, it would feel zero force? Yeah. OK, which means, according to this definition here, electric field must be zero. Yeah? That's what I mean. It's a property of space. Electric field, it's not tied down to a charge. Charges do produce it, but electric field is it's a property of the, that point in space. Now, when I now finally actually place a charge, then the point in space now begins to have a non-zero, non-trivial, interesting electric field. But even when this says um, zero electric field, that's a still the property of space. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 try, keep, I know I always try to do analogies, and I'm not good at it. So let me just move on. So, you know, this is, uh, so this is something that can illustrate electric field directions. And do these directions kind of make intuitive sense? That's how, what you would have guessed. And if I put in a negative charge instead, then do these directions kind of make intuitive sense? Yeah? Sorry. Does the force always even correlate to the thing? So a negative would always be pointing towards a negative charge? So the positive is always be radiating outwards? Yeah. So the thing to remember about connecting the force to electric field is that the, that connection is 
easier. It's a more one-to-one -one if you assume that this is a positive charge. So assume that this Q in this expression is positive. I mean, it's not always going to be. But if you are trying to figure out the direction of electric field from the force, then you should assume it's positive. Otherwise, you're <laughs> introducing unnecessary negative signs. So that's what these arrows pointing towards the negative charge is indicating. What it's saying is that if I were to place a positive charge here, it would be attracted towards the negative charge. Like, you believe that, right? Yeah. So that's what these field, uh, electric fields pointing toward the discharge is illustrating. Yeah. Now, these are not actually, what you are seeing on the screen, they are not field lines. They are, I guess they are similar to the vector field representation, right? Where you essentially define a lattice, and at each of these lattice points, you, def uh, you give the direction, and you give the magnitude. Here, it's done by the opaqueness of the thing. So uh, let me draw what the electric field lines would look like based on this, uh, I don't know, vector field representation of electric fields uh, given by the program. I guess the um, point comes down to when you are programming, it's much easier to show something like this than drawing electric field lines. When you're drawing it by hand, it's easier to draw electric field lines. Can you imagine drawing every one of these little arrows? Like, anyone want to do that as a homework? No, right? <laughs> so, um, so, you know, drawing this vector field, it's a much more cumbersome task for us humans. When you're programming, it's actually easier. Because when you're uh, drawing electric field lines, it has to be one continuous line. So this is how you would draw an electric field line based on these vector fields I see. Um, let me, just so that I'm not dealing with any singularities, let's say I'm dealing with a positive charge here. And I'm just going to pick a point to start. Here, this point here. And I ask myself, all right, where do I need to go next? I look at the direction of the arrow, and I say, all right, I'm going to have to go left. So I keep going left until I reach my next guiding point. Well, OK, where should I go next? <laughs> keep going left. So you imagine connecting these lines, and that's what becomes one of your electric field lines. And you can imagine doing that at several different points. Let me do just the three more of those. Starting at this point, I'm going to uh, keep following this arrow to have one more field line here. Uh, starting at this point, um, it's a little bit to the left, but I think it's going to be easier if I just follow down. So <laughs> I'll do that. Um, so same thing here. It's slightly to the left, but uh, something close to maybe like this. Good. I'm going to introduce a couple additional rules or conventions that we follow that will make electric field lines represent more quantitative information. The very first of those rules is, I hope this makes intuitive sense so that you, know, you don't have to write it down or like, it makes sense and you would remember. So what I'm going to say is uh, when I first drew this line, I just picked a point to start, right? Like the way I did it, nothing stopped me from picking this point to start and say, all right, it's going that way, uh, that way, that way. Nothing stopped me from drawing this field line, right? So what I'm going to say is, as a, I guess I should roll, write down the rules. So field line rules. Field line rules. So the first rule, number one, is fields start or stop only on charges. So what that means is that this line that I started from this point, I should really draw backward until it, um, it looks like it's starting from a charge. Same thing with these three lines. I have to connect them back until they look like they're starting from the positive charge here. So in other words, a field line, they can only start on a positive charge. Where do you think field lines can stop? Well, another positive charge or another what? Or negative charge. 
Yeah, why couldn't field lines stop at positive charge? Yeah, because field line is supposed to go away from positive charge. So you can actually see it here. Uh, let me place another positive charge um, at the location where that one field line is about to end. So let me place this positive charge here. And let's see what happens to the electric field. So if you are following this, oh wait, it's hard to see. OK, let me put it somewhere uh, close enough. Um, you have to draw it very carefully. Um, if you start here, what you will find is that all the field lines are sort of, they bend. They bend like this and bend to go upward. So, you know, there's field line beginning from here, but not, not one that ends there. All right, let me get rid of it. So um, the field lines can only start on positive charge, and they can only stop or end on the negative charge. Does this make intuitive sense? Yes? OK. Um, so that's a one rule. I mean, I hope that one is intuitive. And the second rule is, this is really why I'm not doing this. I'm not you know, picking all these points. So you know, if this was the only rule in place, I could do this. I could pick these three in points that are interesting to me, draw field lines starting from them. You know, drawing these lines. And to make this, that make this good, what I can do is, all right, having drawn all these, I am going to just connect them backward to have them connect back at the charge. Like, what's wrong with that? According to rule number one, nothing wrong with it. But um, I, wouldn't draw, I would never draw field lines this way because of the second rule. So the um, second rule, you can state it in, in two different ways. You could say um, number of lines starting from charge is proportional to the magnitude of charge. As in, um, this one plus charge, it, uh, let's say I drew four lines to it. Then the convention that I'm going to follow is that if I have two charges, double the number of charges, so stronger electric field, then I'm going to associate double the number of field lines with that. So I will draw double the number of field lines for double the number of charges. And this is closely tied to, um, there's a reason why we follow this rule. The, here's the second version of uh, uh, stating this rule, is this is you know, the, way, the reason it's important in terms of building your conceptual picture. The number of, um, not number, I have to call this density. Density of field lines is proportional to um, electric field strength. Does this make intuitive sense? That where these field lines are closer together, where these field lines are closer together, so in this picture, that would be near, this char near the charge. So where they are closer together, that represents electric field being stronger. And out here, where they are farther apart, that represents electric field being weaker. Like that makes intuitive sense? Yeah. So you know, all these rules, they kind of make sense. That's why I said, you know, I, I'm writing it down, but you don't have to write it down because it's like, yeah, I, I, that's what you would have assumed if I didn't tell you that. And by the way, these rules are what's preventing me from drawing these extra lines here. So why couldn't I draw these extra lines on one side of the charge? Like, what's wrong with that? Well, so I'm going to say, all right, for two charges, I associate 10 lines instead of eight. Because it's not evenly dispersed. Yeah, it has to be evenly dispersed. You have this intuitive feel that when you have a um, point charge or a spherical charge like this, the electric field at this point is not any, or electric field at this point is not any stronger than electric field at some other point that's at same distance. So 
But what this uh, wrong drawing is trying to show is that they might be, which is not. That's why these lines are not allowed. Because if you drew them, you are, in, you are implying that somehow the electric field on this side is stronger than the electric field here, and that's not the case. Yep. So let's see. I think that's it. That's all the rules there are there. These are really the two hard rules, that they only start and stop and charges. Now, they are allowed to go out to infinity, never ending. That's fine. And that um, density of field lines indicate the electric field strength. And this is enforced by following this rule. That as you are drawing field lines, you keep to some consistent number of lines that you are starting from a charge. 